What's up folks? BCSG here. No, it's been a while since I've done one of these face-to-face -face things. Um, excuse the, the knocking and the drilling noises if there are any. There's some construction going on. Uh, anyway, so this this today's video is a spin-off from an earlier video that I did on ultralight bait cast fishing. Uh, I'll, uh, that video covered more of a general definition of the genre and a kind of overview of the genre. And I'll leave a link in the description if you guys are interested to watch that one. So anyway, today's video, I'll be talking about the basics of tackle, specifically with the purpose of helping those who are interested in getting into the genre. You know, there's, there's going to be some overlap and some uh, repetition from whatever I said in my previous video, but I wanted to make a more practical video specifically focusing on how, how you would get into uh, ultralight bait cast fishing rather than what it is you know how how can you get into it more than what it is but anyway I still have to somewhat define it just for context so I'll give you a one-line definition of what I think ultralight bait cast fishing is ultralight bait cast fishing to me is simply casting micro layers on a bait casting setup that's it casting micro layers on a bait casting setup so for for this purpose the lure range that I'm talking about to be classified as ultralight, I would say it would be lures ranging between 2.5 grams to 5 grams. 2.5 to 5 grams. That's the range I'm working with here today. Why, why the 2.5 gram lower range? Even knowing that I can cast below that, why do I put the range at 2.5 grams? Practically speaking, with respect to Singapore, Singapore waters in general, which is where we all fish or most of us fish, the very popular micro lures that are widely used tend to cap out at the lower range of 2.5 grams. You know, lures like the Backing Minnow, that's like 2.7 grams or 2.6 grams. The, the Duo Toto 42S. Uh, these are prime examples of lures that the, the smaller, smaller end of what uh, we would generally use in the spectrum. Now, why the upper range of 5 grams? Simply because anything above 5 grams can be handled relatively easy, easily by any non-finesse small to medium sized bait casting reel. So general reels will be able to handle anything above 5 grams. So therefore, for the purpose of this video, I'm putting the lure range between 2.5 to 5 grams. So anyway, there are two aspects that are vital to casting micro lures on bait casting setups. The first one is casting style. The second one is, of course, tackle. Uh, I'm gonna talk about casting style first. Now the casting style for, uh, this is obviously BC specific, bait casting specific. The casting style for micro lures is radically different uh, from the casting style of regular heavier lures. To simply put it, with heavier lures, you can get away with using a lot more power uh, power equals distance, that kind of equation. But when you're casting micro layers, you know, um, let me use a, a sports example. Think of regular bait casting setups as a baseball pitch. Casting a regular bait casting setup with a regular weighted layer. You want to throw as hard as you can to get the ball flying as fast and as far as possible. That's, that's what pretty much makes up a baseball pitch. But with ultralight bait casting, you can look at it as more of a three-point shot in basketball. You aim, you load up, and then you send the ball with just enough force for the ball to get into the net. You know, it's, it takes a bit more finesse. You don't just simply, in basketball, you don't just simply take the ball and throw it at the net and hope it goes in, if you get the analogy. Understand that micro lures lack the weight that is necessary to simply whip them out there. Your, your casting stroke needs to, be, uh, needs to be different. It needs to rely on the rod to cast the lure rather than your arm. Uh, that's why so many people describe ultralight or finesse casting as a flick rather than a whip, you know, or something like that. They call it a flick because that's what it actually looks like when you're watching someone cast a finesse lure or cast a micro lure. It just looks like they're giving a little flick. You see, so trying to keep things as simple as possible, here are a few tips when it comes to casting. There are two primary types of casts. I mean, skipping all the technical stuff, you have the overhead cast. And then you have the side cast. 
the easiest, the single and easiest tip I can give you for casting light lures for the overhead cast is to aim up. Aim up. So if you look from the side, if you're casting the typical cast, you're, you're trying to cast in front of you, right? So the typical cast, you're gonna, you're gonna do this. You're gonna hold the reel and you're gonna cast like that. And this is where your arm ends up. Okay, now, what a lot of people, I'm sure if you guys have tried casting lures that are too light for your setup, what you will encounter is the lure just slams down against the water. It flies lower than necessary. So how you're going to fix this is to aim up all the time. Back and forward, you're letting go 45 degrees up into the air. And then once the lure starts flying, you slowly correct your stroke down to bring your arm in front of you. So that's the, the tip for overhead casting. Aim 45 degrees up in the air, release your thumb, and then slowly correct. For side casts, it's a bit more complicated, but I generally go with the logic of move the rod tip, not the rod. Okay, when you're going for a side cast, just remember that with lighter lures, you need to, the rod is the one doing the casting, not your arm. So you want to move the rod tip as much as possible rather than moving the whole rod like that which is also why people call it a flick because the arm doesn't actually travel that much distance okay the cast is one swift motion a lot of the, the biggest mistake I see folks making especially with the side in fact they make the same mistake with the overhead cast and the side cast it is one swift motion front to back to front. The rod starts here and the rod ends here. The rod starts here for a side cast and the rod ends here. So you bring it back and forward in one swift motion. The most important thing about a side cast is not the whip. It's not the forward whip, it is the back swing. You see, that's what a lot of people, uh, they, they don't consider. When you're casting lighter lures, if you cast with your right hand, what you will definitely notice is the lure mysteriously flies to the left. So you're going to be casting and the lure is just flying this way. And what do you do to make up for it? You release the thumb earlier, right? You release it earlier, the lure flies straighter. But very few people actually make up for the fact that you're releasing the lure earlier. What happens when you release it earlier is you're actually effectively shortening your casting stroke. Just imagine you start the cast here, your rod starts here, and it ends here. So it starts here and it ends here, but it, the lure flies this way, so in order to make it fly straight, you release your thumb here. Essentially, that means your cast starts from here and ends here. You're cutting off half of your cast. So what do you do to make up for it? If you don't get good distance, you whip. You use more force. And that is what causes all the backlashes and all the behoons and all that. So what you want to focus on for a side cast is bring the rod back further. Bring the rod tip back further than you normally would. That will give you all the power necessary to get the layoff flying as far as possible whilst allowing you to release your thumb a bit earlier so that the layoff flies straight. That's pretty much it for casting style. These are the best tips I can give you. Um, as with all forms of bait cast, bait casting, it takes a lot of practice. And with the right technique and enough practice, it's not as hard as you imagine. All right, so that's it, that's it for, the, for, for the casting style aspect. Now we talk about, I guess, what most folks want to hear, which is tackle. Now I did cover tackle a little bit in the last video, but it was all, like I said, general overview stuff. Nothing quite specific to teaching you what you need to buy and how you should go about buying tackle for ultralight bait cast fishing. So like any fishing genre, the rod and the reel kind of define the genre. But before I go on, I want to correct a very important misconception that I've been seeing more and more lately with regards to uh, ultralight BC fishing. Many newer anglers seem to be placing too much emphasis on the rod and too little emphasis on the reel. What, what, what these folks end up doing is they, they buy the best rod, the absolute best rod that they can afford, and then they pair it with a reel that kind of fits into the budget afterwards. Folks, in 
ultralight BC fishing, it's actually the other way around. You want to spend all that money buying the best reel you can afford. And then, once you've gotten the reel, then you see what you can do about the rod that fits into the budget. But anyway, let's, let's start talking about the rod first because rods are much easier to explain. So to cast micro lures, you simply need a rod that can load the lures in that weight range. In this case, it's 2.5 to 5 grams. So a, a good way to kind of judge this is to simply snap on, say, a backing minnow, 2.7 grams, right? Snap it on, onto your snap, hold the rod out, just shake the rod a little bit, and just shake it a little bit, and look at the rod tip. If the rod tip seems to be bending and influenced by the weight of the lure, it bends with the lure. You know, you don't want it to bend all the way. That obviously shows that the lure is too heavy. But you, you, want it, you want the lure to be able to bend the rod tip as you wiggle and shake the rod. If the rod tip doesn't move at all, or moves very little, then you can kind of make the conclusion that the rod is maybe a bit too heavy or a bit too stiff for the lures that you're trying to cast. Anyway, this is just general a general guideline, guys. You know, it's not a hard and fast rule. It's just what I feel is a very easy and very um, visual, direct way to ascertain whether a rod can load the lures that you want to. You snap a lure on and just shake the rod. So the general rod classes we are talking about when it comes to local waters, number one, and ultralight BC fishing, the rod classes you're looking at would range from two to six pounds, ultralight class two to six pound rods, all the way up to six to 12 pound rods. I know that a lot of folks feel that six to, six to 12 pounds is too heavy. Maybe from a, a hook ripping out or hook opening perspective, sometimes you're using really delicate hooks, you don't want to open the hook or rip the hook out of the fish's mouth. But in terms of castability, remember we're going back to whether the, the lure can load the rod properly or the, the rod can load the lures. So what I've noticed is quite a fair bit of 6 to 12 pound rods can actually load all the way down to two and a half grams quite easily and quite effectively. That is why I put this rod range as such. Now, another important thing to remember is that no line rating or rod rating or, or lure rating can perfectly describe a rod's loading characteristics. Generally, you would need to put a lure on and best case scenario, cast it a couple of times in order to really know whether this particular rod is in fact good for loading the lures that you want to cast with it. Now, the other aspect of rods is action. It's also a very important factor, but I won't be talking about action too much in this video, just simply because it's a very personal thing. You see, what's most important is that the, the rod can load the lure. The action is where the rod bends along the blank. It either bends nearer to the tip or it bends nearer to the midsection. So. That's really personal preference. A rod that can load light lures is going to be able to cast them whether or not it's a fast action rod or a slower action rod. It becomes personal because some folks find it easier, they are, depending on the casting style, it's easier to cast a rod with a given action versus another rod with a different action. But it doesn't affect the rod's ability to cast those lures. All right, that's it for the rods, and now moving on to the reels. Now, as I said earlier at the start of this video, the reel is the more, the more important of the two. Why? Even if your rod can load all these micro lures, if your reel isn't able to manage the line well, you're not going to be casting anything, pretty much. You've got to understand that a finesse reel is a requirement for ultralight bait cast fishing. It's a requirement. There are no two ways about it. It's a hard requirement. So what makes a real finesse? Now let's take all the other special spool technology, special brick technology, and all those technical aspects. Just forget about all that for a second. There's only one supreme ruler here when it comes to um, casting performance, and that's the spool. Nothing affects a reel's casting ability in terms of light lures. Nothing affects it more than the weight of the spool. The bearings, the spool bearings do affect the casting ability, but not as much as the weight of the spool. I'll talk more about the bearings later. So, 
a light spool. This spool needs to be really light. It's not just the, hey, our new Shimano 3DS spool is lighter than ever. No, not that kind of light. I'm talking about literal numbers, literal weight. The spool has to be light. Uh, this is not a hard rule, but in general, a good guideline would, based on my experiences and whatever research I've done, is that in order to cast lures down to about 2.5 grams, you would need a spool that weighs at most 9 grams and below. You know, and this is uh, the spool weight without the bearing assembly. Because some reels have bearings on the spools, some, most reels in the Shimano lineup don't have bearings. So just the spool assembly without the bearings, the spool should not weigh more than 9 grams. So what's the reason behind, behind this whole spool weight theory? Well, in order to cast a lure, any lure, the spool on the BC reel needs to turn to feed line out so the lure can fly. Less spool weight, if a lighter spool means much less force is required to start the spool moving, we call that startup inertia. Much less force is required and what this means is a lighter lure will be able to fly further and less hindered. Now, is a shallow spool necessary for ultralight bait cast fishing? The answer is no. Once you have a light enough spool, spool weight is the most important thing. Once you have a light enough spool, the depth of the spool simply determines how much line you can put onto the spool. I mean, of course, too deep is, is, is not good. But why I'm not too worried about the depth is because it's going to be pretty hard to find a finesse spool that is too deep. Most finesse spools are on the shallow side or super shallow side, in fact. Uh, so I wouldn't worry too much about spool depth. However, do keep in mind that adding more line onto a spool adds more weight to the spool. So don't overfill your spools. I mean, it defeats the purpose of getting a lightweight spool. For local fishing, 70 to 80 meters of line is generally more than enough for most forms of fishing we do here. Um, you could probably get away with 100 meters. I have some reels with 100 meters of line on it. Local freshwater, 70 to 80 meters, more than enough. Don't fill the spool more than necessary. That's basically the, the main takeaway from, from this. So what does all of this mean when it comes to talking about reels and um, finesse fishing? It means you have two choices to get into ultralight bait cast fishing. You either buy a reel that has a finesse spool by default, and most of these reels would be considered BFS reels or finesse reels. You either buy a finesse reel or you buy a finesse spool for a reel that you already use, assuming your reel has a finesse spool option. All right, so that's it for spools. Um, the, so the less, the less important, but still the second most important part of a reel is the bearings. Now, bearings are what allow your spool to spin. You know, your spool sits on one or two bearings and that's what keeps the spool spinning during free spool. Now, the better uh, the bearings, um, the more freely the spool will spin. So the benefits here are really obvious. But why is this less important? Two reasons. First, if you bought a default finesse reel, if you actually bought a finesse reel, the bearings that come with the reel by default are already almost guaranteed to be good enough for finesse applications. You know, not many manufacturers will put crappy bearings in a reel made for finesse applications, if you get the logic. Now, the second reason is because most of the popular reels that, that folks use these days, um, things like, you know, the Tatula, that's a really popular reel. You know, the Shimano Curado, that's another really popular reel. You know, the Abu Revos, those are popular reels. And all these reels already come with decently good bearings. Sure, they're not finesse bearings, but they're decently good. You know, all you need to do is probably give them a good cleaning, add a finesse spool into that reel if, if there is a finesse spool option and they'll generally get the job done. Upgrading bearings, you can look at it as you're driving a regular car versus driving a Ferrari or a Lamborghini. The regular car will still get you from point A to point B. It still gets the job done. So that's how I look at bearings. Default bearings are good enough to get the job done. Upgrading your bearings just improves what's already possible. So anyway, that's pretty much all the technical information I feel that one would need to make a venture into you uh, ultralight uh, BC fishing but before you go out and start shopping let's talk quickly about what makes or breaks this entire genre and that would be 
the price, the cost of um, entry, the cost of tackle, you can easily find ultralight finesse BC rods under 70 bucks, 80 bucks. What's going to cost you at least two to three hundred dollars is the reel. So that's just how the price point works right now. I hope that as finesse fishing gets a bit more popular, the prices drop. But honestly, I don't really see it happening anytime soon. Uh, so just keep that in mind, guys, when you go out to shop for when you're planning your budget, the reel is more important. Budget for the reel and then think about the rod after that. Get a good reel first, think about the rod after that. All right, folks, I know this was a long video, but I hope this answers some of the questions that I've been getting recently about the, the genre of um, ultralight or finesse bait cast fishing. Um, I hope this helps give you a better idea of what to expect from the genre, what, what to look for when you're buying tackle for the genre. And uh, so I'm going to end this video with a list. I'm going to give you a list of rod and reel options. I'm going to try to make it as comprehensive as possible so the list will be quite long. So at least you get a better idea of what options are available locally and stuff like that. Maybe I'll try to, my best to put in the price ranges if possible uh, just to help you guys along. So as usual, thanks so much for watching my videos, guys. You know, I really appreciate the support. So if you, if you like this video, as usual, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, give me a thumbs down, share my videos with your friends if you learned something, subscribe, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Tight lines.